So this is the first part of the tutorial and we're going to start by picking up the base template we have and we will adapt it to all the characters we need. So the first step is going to be export the OBJ into ZBrush and start working on the shape to make sure it matches the concept art as close as possible so we have a first pass on the character. So I'll make sure the UV groups are all separate into different uh, 0 to 1 ratios so I can create different polygroups and easily mask the arms, the legs, the head, the ears so it's much easier for me to work on the character by isolating parts. So I'll just make an OBJ, export it to ZBrush and start the work. So the first step is to create the actual polygroups and I'm using a plugin to do incremental saves which is really useful while working on ZBrush so I get a shortcut for it. I'm also going to quickly separate the different views for the characters so I have reference and I can use it as a background plane on ZBrush and then I'm using the image plane plugin so I can place the images on the background and then I can start working on the shape so with polygroups it's really easy for me to hide the arms and start working on the main torso shape just pushing and pulling vertices around So it's nice when you have a good topology that allows you to know each edge loop, what it should match. So in this case we can see a couple of edges around the torso that match the hips and the rib cage. So we should try to make sure that those will match the right areas on the concept. Also the concept is bidimensional and we do not have a three-quarter back view so we need to do a bit of guessing in trying to imagine how the back is going to be but since it's a very simple mesh it shouldn't be much of a problem and the concept we're going to actually model for the game is a dressed character so this is just a basic guideline so we know where the joints are we know where the torso is so when we're doing a dressed up character we know exactly where the knees are going to be on all versions So once we're happy with the torso, we load an image with the arm side reference and we use it. I personally quite like the way the freeform way ZBrush allows you to sculpt using reference planes. And since this is a cartoon character, the planes are not 100% accurate to what it should really look like. So there's a little bit of guessing, guesswork and trying to figure out some angles which allows this kind of freedom. If it was a technical model then we would definitely need to use max reference planes, get everything perfectly aligned and make sure all views match so there would be no room for errors. I've also noticed there is a bit of overlapping on the armpit area so I'm going to have to fix that later. I'll also use the smart symmetry to pass the details from one arm into the other arm since I isolated that section so the details don't get transferred. And I'm going to start working on the back view. I'll probably have to raise the arms later on so we don't get that problem in the armpit and we get a 45 degree view working well so it can be used by animators for rigging otherwise we would have some problems. We can see now when I'm placing the character on the back view 
that there is clearly an overlap that will definitely need to be fixed. Also, it's always a good idea to have different materials on your on your palette. ZBrush website has a really good database, so you can copy a couple of them and switch between them when using image planes as reference, so it's easier for you to see the model or the reference plane as you require. So once I'm happy with the overall torso shape, I'll zoom in and get working on the head. Once again, the concept is not fully symmetrical, so we should choose one off one side of the face and use it as a guideline to work on the shapes. Otherwise, we'll be changing all the time. Later on, then, we can break that symmetry and make each side unique, but for the moment, I would advise to keep each side exactly the same, especially before getting the model approved by the art director. You can also see how the polygroups we've made helped defining and understanding what each area means. So we can see the green for the jaw and the ear and the purple area for the eye, the eye sockets. Also this image plane plugin has a very useful option to save the position of your mesh so you can move it around while working on the view and then reposition again having lots of freedom to move it between different angles without losing the original position you had which is like something crucial since ZBrush only has one viewport once we're fairly happy with the overall structure then we just get the reference image and we start sculpting in a more freestyle way just to make sure that we compensate for the problems that we had while working with specific angles. You can see that the corners of the mouth are a bit strange and the way the eye structure blends with the model is not very good. So, just looking at the content and working until we feel it's right, it's the quickest way to go to fix these kind of problems. So now I've imported the mesh we've, got, we've worked on ZBrush into Max, and I'm going to move the original eyes and hair shape so they match this new mesh, and then I'll export them back into ZBrush and I will work on them to make sure they once again match the concept. So now I have the eyes and the hair on ZBrush and I'll go back into the front view, load up the reference for the front view and work on the hair so it matches the concept art and then go to the side views and do the same thing I also want to make sure that the scale of the eyes and the placement is accurate so then I can move the skull shape around to match the eyes. I find it much easier to have the eyes there so I can know exactly how the eye sockets go around the eye. So we can now see how the hair was quite off originally and we can see how much close to the skull it is which will also make us reevaluate how the skull actually is also we don't have a side view for the right side of the head so we'll have to do a bit of guesswork trying to figure out how the haircut is ideally we should have a concept for it or ask for even a quick 
with drawing just to have an idea or if there's any specific requirement for it. But in this case we should be able to improvise. So once we're happy with the shapes of the character, we're going to fix any overlapping issues and make sure the geometry is not causing us any problems. So I've noticed that ZBrush, whenever you have a face that's bent, creates an edge, as you can see on the corners of the mouth. So that is something we'll have to take into account when we go back into Max to fix it. Also, personally, it's quite easier for me with the poly groups to relax the corner areas of the mouth or the eyes or the armpits before going into Max and cleaning up the model. We should always make sure, since we are using an OBJ format between two softwares, that we don't get any major issues going on. Especially later on, once you go into high res, any change that you make to the mesh will destroy the connection between the high res and the low res. You can now see the problem that I mentioned before about the armpits and how they're overlapping. So I'll quickly use the transpose tools and raise the arms, allowing me to fix the overlapping we have and clean up that section. You will also notice that the problem I was talking about about triangles is also happening on the armpit since the faces were so compressed ZBrush didn't know how to use them and he created some edges that will need to be cleaned up in Max after we export it from ZBrush. Always when exporting from ZBrush make sure that you are merging all the parts on the export menu and not exporting all the separate poly groups. You can now see I'm cleaning up all the edge issues we had inside the mouth, in the corners, and the armpits. Also, if you're using PolyBoost, it has a really nice feature to look out for triangle, three sided faces, and five sided faces, which is very, very useful. And now in Max, it will be much easier to relax our mesh and make sure that we don't have any more overlapping issues. So we quickly go to the inside of the mouth again and work out to make sure all edges have good distance between them. We turn any relevant face we have to. And also the armpit. Once you get used to characters, you'll know which ones are the problematic areas we always find and be on the lookout for them. And once it's ready, we can now start to UV map the head to prepare for the high-res modeling.